Welcome to this GNS3.org presentation, sponsored by ConfiguredTerminal.com. My name is David Bombal, CCIE 11023. In this short video, I want to show you how to configure GNS3 to allow virtual routers running in GNS3 to communicate with physical devices on the network. In this example, we're going to use the Microsoft Loopback Adapter to enable connectivity between the virtualized infrastructure and the physical infrastructure. We'll start off with a very simple topology. We're going to configure a router in GNS3 and we'll configure it with a loopback address of quadruple one. We'll configure its fast Ethernet interface with an IP address of 10.0.0.200 and then we'll configure that router to talk to the physical infrastructure using the Microsoft loopback adapter. So we'll set up communication between GNS3 and our physical PC. We'll give the PC an IP address of 10.0.0.9. Once we've completed that configuration, we'll set up the GNS3 router to communicate with a physical Cisco router. I'll configure the physical Cisco router with an IP address of quadruple two, and then we'll run a routing protocol between the GNS3 virtual router and physical router. So we'll run RIP in this example and exchange routes so that the physical router can ping the loopback of quadruple one and the GNS3 router can ping the loopback of quadruple two. So in GNS3, I'm going to drag a router to the topology pane. I'm also going to drag a cloud to the topology pane. Right click on the cloud, select configure, click on the cloud, and then select my network card. Click Add and click OK. I'm then going to add a link between my router and the cloud. So select Fast Ethernet, link the router to the cloud, and select the loopback adapter that I've just configured. So you can see that Fast Ethernet 00 has been connected to the cloud with name C1. This cloud is how you physically connect to the outside world using the Microsoft loopback adapter. I'm going to start my router. Open up a console connection. The router boots up. Once booted, I can go to Enable, Global Configuration Mode, go to my FOST Ethernet 00 interface, configure it with an IP address. In our example, we're going to configure it with this IP address and no shut the interface. I'm then going to create a loopback interface and give it an IP address of the following. Now I'm only creating the loopback address to prove that I can exchange routes using a routing protocol. So at the moment if I type the command show IP interface brief, you can see that my FOSS Ethernet interface has been configured with an IP address of 10.0.0.200 and I have my loopback address configured. Now in a DOS prompt, so in Windows, I'm going to ping 10.0.0.200 which is the IP address of my GNS3 router and as you can see the ping is successful. I'm going to try and telnet to the router and as you can see there it says password required but none set and the connection is closed. So back in my GNS3 router once again doing the command show IP interface brief shows me that my IP address is 10.0.0.200 I'm going to create an enable password of Cisco, go on to the VTY and give it a password of Cisco. So back in my DOS prompt, if I telnet to the router again, notice it's asking me for a password and I can go 
to privilege mode and type the command show IP interface brief. So I've been able to telnet from my PC via the loopback adapter to my router in GNS3. It's as simple as that to get GNS3 to talk to a physical infrastructure. Now that we've successfully configured GNS3 to allow connectivity between a physical PC and a virtual router, we'll now configure connectivity between the virtual GNS3 router and a physical Cisco router. We'll set up the RIP routing protocol and exchange routes between the two routers. So just to prove connectivity, I'm going to ping my PC from the GNS3 router. As you can see, the ping was successful. Opening up a DOS prompt and typing the command ipconfig, you can see that the IP address of this PC is 10.0.0.9. And once again, if we telnet to the router, we can log in. So on the router's console, let's see if we can ping the physical router in our infrastructure. And as you can see, we are able to ping the router. If I telnet to 10.0.0.254, notice it's asking for a username. I'll put in the username and password. If I type the command show version, you can see that this is an 850 router. So it's physically a Cisco 857W router. You can see, for instance, that it has a DSL interface, it has fast Ethernet interfaces, it has wireless. So this is a physical router, and there's communication between GNS3 and the physical router. So just to prove this, I'm going to create a loopback on the physical router with an IP address of 2222 enable RIP and then I'm going to exit back to our GNS3 router so once again show version shows me that we are on our 3660 GNS3 router Typing the command show IP route shows me that I have a loopback interface as well as network 10. So I'm going to go conft router rip network 10 0 0 0 network 1 0 0 and I'm going to set the version to 2. In DOS now, I'll telnet back to the physical router. Configure RIP with version 2 and enable network 10. And hopefully, show up your route will show us routes. At the moment, we're only seeing directly connected interfaces. Show IP RIP, RIP database. Shows me that RIP is running on network 1 as well as network 10. On our physical router, show IP RIP database shows us suddenly that this router has learnt about network 1 via IP address 10.0.0.200. The loopback is directly connected. So on the physical router, typing the command show IP route shows us that we've learned a RIP route. And back on our GNS3 router, show IP route shows us that we've learned a RIP route. Network 2 via 10.0.0.254. So I should be able to ping quadruple 2 which I can. 
Now let's disable auto summarization. So router rip, no auto summary. Do the same on our physical router. Router rip, no auto summary. Back on our GNS3 router, show IP route. Let's clear the writing table. Now we can see the slash 32 network as configured on our physical router. So once again, ping quadruple two. I can tell net to quadruple two. And notice we are on the physical router. So I've shown you an example of communication between a GNS3 router and a physical router using once again the loopback adapter in GNS3. This GNS3 router is connected to the cloud which connects us to the physical infrastructure and we are learning routes from a physical router. So this communication between our GNS3 router and our physical router has successfully been configured. That concludes the short video showing you how to integrate GNS3 with physical devices. I showed you how to configure GNS3 to talk to a physical PC as well as a physical Cisco router and how to enable a routing protocol to exchange routes between a physical router and a virtual GNS3 router. I'm David Bomble and I wish you all the best with your studies. Thank you for watching this video.